think, yeah, I think I'm recording. I'm <clears throat> doing camera experiments, so different camera, um, different lights. See what happens. Um, yeah, probably not the best, but see what it does. Um, all right, so a couple of subjects. <sighs> Which to get to first? Uh, all right, anyway, the magnetism guy, you know, the angry photographer guy. But anybody just point out with the, I'll just do the, yeah, so I'm going to do some of his stuff after this part. So anyways, I, you know, see, that's the good thing about making these videos. After I made the last video, I thought of something, um, <clears throat> you know, about this whole field thing. And um, the positions couldn't really change over time. I mean, the positions of things, these quanta, um, in a sense, I mean, they're moving, <laughs> but they're always going to move to the position where they collide in those collision points. <sighs> See, well, regardless, I guess it's saying moving isn't the right word to use. Uh, um, they're not going to change their relative distance. So all that can really be changed is their polarization. And I was thinking, well, most more specifically, I was, I was thinking that you, you can't you can't really take a bunch of them and steer them into like a laser beam or something. So what's really happening is that the stuff that already exists in the field, the flow, the current, um, is just converted into photons, something we can see. And the conversion <coughs> is kind of sneaky in the sense that it's not... Um, like it's not an extra stream of photons going with something other stream it's it's the it's the field stream it's it's stuff going that was already going in that direction and what's really happened is is that it's polarized the frequency so there's still lots of quanta in between so so say if there's a, a infrared light so that's a certain frequency and so there's a certain distance between the little hard objects as we'll call them the quanta and that defines the defines what infrared light is <coughs> well it's not a constant stream so when you see light it's coming not from just one electron there's a bunch of electrons producing the light and each one is polarized a specific way so if the light was completely polarized, then they'd all be producing light in the same dimension, so to speak. The same, they'd all have the same polarization. They'd all be coming at you the same way. And if it's unpolarized, it's all the same frequency, but each electron is producing a different polarization. But each individual electron is producing all light of the same, you know, all photons of the same polarization. And what the polarization really represents is there's a whole bunch of quanta in the stream and it's just that the ones at the specific distance are the ones that have been polarized and those are the ones the receiving electron is recognizing. So there's a whole bunch of stuff coming in and it's really only seeing the ones that are properly polarized and those are the ones at the proper frequency. So, <clears throat> I'm just bringing this up in a sense because it's like, um, you know, I, I don't want to get into some woo about, uh, you know, how we're tuned to frequencies and all that kind of stuff because it's nothing wooey. But I just mean that it's kind of funny that matter's really not different than space beyond the fact that it has this, um, it's just been polarized and reduced to frequencies and it's that that's made what we are different than what the rest of the space is is just the fact that we have the same the fl the, the the chaos is still under us we're we're riding on the chaos on 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 on, on a field of of <sighs> You know, there's basic mechanics that's very kinetic and very unchanging in a sense. The universe doesn't do anything. It just keeps... These little bits keep interacting. But the key thing it's doing is that these bits are creating pockets of polarization. And those polarization ends up, you know, having... Can, can be communicated from one 
piece of matter to another through this frequency thing. And that's the key ingredient. Well, anyway, I didn't articulate this very well, but for posterity, I'm just making this video just to point out that, well, you know, if, if somebody in the future said, hey, Gary didn't quite get that part. Yeah, maybe he did. <laughs> yeah, that it's not, um, you know, you're not, it's like magnetism isn't, isn't creating energy and shoving it in some direction. It's um, labeling the energy that's already moving through it. And it's basically changing its color. It's, what's a better way to say that? It's, it's just putting a marker on it um, and using the mechanism of polarization. And so we're more a function of polarization of quanta than we are a function of capturing, truly capturing. The capture is just in, of of a um, of the marker. Yeah, it's hard hard to describe it um, to be fully understood. But uh, anyway, it's, you know, if somebody understands the other stuff I'm talking about, they might get what I was just talking about. But it's sort of an important feature that there's no there's no changing the flow of energy. There's just changing um, the identifiability, the the orientation. Now, the well, orientation would be polarization. Um, but anyway, no, it doesn't really matter. All right, on to the uh, angry photographer guy, and he's, he's he's done a few of these experiments. Okay, he's taken a gyroscope on a big magnet. This was the most recent one, and. It, you know, I, I don't, I haven't studied up on all this stuff, but obviously there's things, these things called eddy currents. So the idea would be that conductors aren't magnetic, but if you put electricity through them, they'll create electromagnetism. It's not very strong, um, you know, unless you coil them a lot of times and all this kind of stuff, but it's there. Anytime there's a current in a conductor, there's a magnetic field that's set up a flux. The argument is you take a metal gyroscope or a metal flywheel and you spin it in a magnetic field, it'll create currents inside of the metal, and those currents will create a magnetism that's sympathetic. So even if it's not a magnetic material like steel, it'll behave as if it was a magnet, uh, an electromagnet, essentially. And um, <clears throat> so like brass or aluminum will behave like a magnet under these circumstances. Um, so anyway, he did this with this flywheel, this brass flywheel, where at one end of the magnet, the corner, uh, he was able to make the flywheel stop moving, you know, to break, because of this eddy current and the fact that it's it's now um, it's now hitting the, the tension of of um, um, the incompatibility of those or the compatibility of that magnetism you know, North Pole, South Pole, and the fact that it would tend to bind as the poles um, are opposite, there would be attraction. Um, and, um, but, you know, he holds it in the center and then says how the center magnetism is different than the outside magnetism. And clearly the difference is, part of the difference is, is how he's holding the gyroscope and that if he held it on its side in the center, I think it would probably stop also. It would break. And I just don't know whether he's tricking us <laughs> on purpose or um, maybe I'm wrong and it doesn't break. And so he didn't do that because it doesn't change anything. But it just looked a little suspicious. <clears throat> All right, the other things he does is takes these magnetic films, you know, these ones, these uh, f f ferrofluid type um, transparencies. Um, and they're thin film. They're, they're not x-ray machines. You can't see dimensionally with them. You can't. All they can detect is what's right in front of them. There's no projector capacity. They can't, they can't see what's happening an inch away or five inches away. So they can give you a visual illusion as if you're seeing something that has depth. But that's an illusion. 
they're only reading a, a surface condition and they're either doing that accurately or inaccurately but um, so one of them he uses to say <coughs> to see you know the the current in the middle of the magnet <laughs> but you're not really seeing that you're just seeing the transparency the the magnetic material all the magnetic bits are moving to the north and south pole and you're left with no magnetic bits in the middle and so it looks like a bright white looks like a light uh, it looks energetic but all it is is the the opaque material has migrated because of the magnetism to the poles that's what all magnets will try to do that's what the iron filings would do if you put them there they would go to the two poles they would try to so it <coughs> that's sort of a doesn't really illustrate anything so the other thing he has is these ferro cells which are round discs with a thin layer of this fluid in between them and then leds around the outside um you know to reflect the light and and the problem with these is, again, it's, he's using them to say, to, to show dimensionality. And it can't be doing that. And so all it can be doing is really just showing field lines like iron filings would do. And so you can do that at different levels and see how um, the material would line up. Now the trick is, is that the alignment isn't um, straight. The, everything comes out curved. Um, and it seems suspicious <clears throat> because we don't see that with iron filings. We don't see that with even ferrofluid as a liquid. You know, plain liquid on a magnet won't reveal any of this spiral stuff. It won't. It won't show you any curves. It'll show you exactly what we see with field lines, which is the ferrofluid will collect on the quiet points, the <clears throat> the field lines where the magnetic material isn't is repulsed just as much as it is attracted and because of that there's no impetus for it to go anywhere so it collects there it stays there because there's nothing harassing it to move there's no imbalance creating a velocity so it just kind of collects where there's no velocity no acceleration um, and clearly there's no indication of any twisting or turning or hyperboloids or any of these features he says are the function of magnets and again the, the the projector of his disc is the only source of this these curved lines and it's, it seems coincidental maybe that these are round ferro cells um, maybe that's part of the problem um, and that really it's just the pressure of the fluid. The fluid has an uneven pressure and therefore is um, distorting the alignments. Um, um, something. I mean, you have to have an explanation for why it's different when you use iron filings. I mean, it, there's really no point in saying, okay, here's, here's, here's this new view of a magnet and here's the old view. You sort of have to explain why the old view is wrong if you're saying the new view is right. Um, and you have to explain why it doesn't show up uh, with the old view. Um, but again, there's no way for these things to detect depth. It, can't <coughs> it wouldn't be able to see my face. It wouldn't be able to it can only do one layer, one tiny slice of reality at a time. And there's no, there's no, there's nothing coming to any surface that would be a projection of what's happening on the inside. Light isn't traveling through the mirror, I mean through the magnet and shining up on anything and reflecting off of anything. The mechanism is pretty clean in the sense that it's just light coming from the sides that bounces off of the, um, ferrous material that's in the fluid and that's where you see it is where it reflects off of the material but it can only do one plane of reality at a time so anyway those are three critiques um, 
Uh, you know, I don't know if he's, he's you know, <laughs> the problem is I can't get to him to ask these, to make these inquiries because he doesn't want to play along. Um, but we'll see. Maybe he'll do a room eventually and uh, allow somebody else to um, challenge him on um, his evidence. And uh, such. So that's all. I think just a test video in some respects. And I just just want to say that. Not, you know, like I said, I didn't, didn't really explain what I was trying to explain. Um, I don't know if I can draw a picture of it, but it, the idea is is that it's a the field <laughs> yeah, is doing what it's doing. And it's like we're on top of that field, but we're just attaching to certain pieces of the field. So, you know, our our form is just uh, yeah, I don't know how to, it's just on pieces of the field it's just that we've stuck our pieces little, little identifiers on little bits in the field and it's really those little identifiers that are are we're still made of the real matter I mean we're made of those real quanta that have those identifiers but it's just that we've identified elements we've we've taken possession of them possession of them in a sense by creating an orientation and um, you know polarization and that's really what matters doing is just collecting polarization um, it's not really collecting quanta well, that's a good enough way to say it but anyway I'll it, 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 you know, it gets into the whole magnetism subject anyway, so I mean, it's another one of the papers I have to write, but it does um, make more sense as you get into these other elements of, um, even just like I said, explaining photons and their, you know, how, how they would become clean enough. You know, there was, a, you know, it was sort of a problem with, you know, in my own perception of how you could have a three mile photon, you know, a radio wave. And how there wouldn't be any noise in inside of that three miles. There wouldn't be any other photons going along in the same direction. And of course there are. It's just that they're not the same polarization. And so they're not going to be the the electron receiving is not going to pay any attention. It's only going to pay to the attention to the ones precisely polarized. Um, and that's it. That was a better way to say it, but it doesn't really matter. Anyway, so let's call it a video. Until next time, such a